We're very happy to have uh, Dan Shapiro, the founder of Glowforge, with us today. Uh, I'm going to embarrass Dan a little bit here. Uh, among Dan's many accomplishments, uh, three-time successful entrepreneur whose past successes included Photobucket, a trailblazer in the world of online photo sharing, uh, SparkBuy, a comparison shopping engine which uh, he sold to Google. He is the author of Hot Seat, the startup CEO guidebook, uh, the creator of the hit board game Robot Turtles, and a visionary and true Renaissance man. So thank you, Dan, for oh, joining us. <laughs> thank so, you. So tell us what we what we just saw. What did we just look at there? So. It actually came about while I was working on this board game project I created with my twins. Uh, at the time, they were four years old. And we created a board game that teaches programming principles to kids as young as preschool. And had a lot of fun with it, blew up on Kickstarter, uh, licensed it out, still available on Amazon. And while I was prototyping to create this game, I discovered this weird backwater technology called CNC laser cutting engraving. It had been developed in the 60s and 70s. And the global market for this was sub $100 million. Nobody was investing in it. Nobody was paying attention. And one thing led to another, and I wound up with this industrial carbon dioxide cutting laser imported from China, installed in my garage. And it was terrible. It took me, took me weeks to get the thing working. But there was this magic where I discovered you could push a button, and in minutes, something truly beautiful would come to life. My kids got into it, they started drawing things that they wanted, and this could create them. And it worked across a whole host of materials. Um, paper and stickers, wood and acrylic, cloth, uh, cardboard, you name it. You could even engrave stone and metal and create really amazing things that we used throughout the house, uh, built things, uh, organizers, spice racks like you saw there, uh, used as gifts. and started to think about what it would be like to bring this into the world. What it would be like to empower the 85 million crafters in the United States with a digital tool that could take their ideas and bring them to life across so many different materials. And this technology, because it's, it's so simple to design for, you can, you can draw your design, you can use Adobe, Photoshop, Illustrator. You can use advanced CAD software, but you can also go in and use uh, PowerPoint or Word to create your design. It all works. Any way to express yourself. You can take a photograph and engrave it and then bring it to life in material to make real and beautiful things. So I brought my bag as an example. This is created uh, on a Glowforge 3D laser printer uh, out of leather. And you'll notice it holds exactly my stuff. It's got a pocket for each one of my things. It is designed just for me and for the things that I carry with. My, my watch band, also made on a Glowforge out of wood and leather, fits me and no other human in this universe. It is own, owning a Glowforge is owning a world in which you get to create the things you imagine for yourself and for the people you love. And that was our newest product, the Glowforge Aura. Uh, which brought the price point down from our, our previous flagship model at five to seven thousand dollars to just twelve hundred dollars launched in uh, just this July, new to market. So you started to play and and experiment with this new laser technology that, that you discovered. How did you uh, satisfy yourself that you were in a market of one or five <laughs> for this? So and you mentioned crafting. Who are these crafters that you speak of? You know, when I, I had this big industrial tool in my garage. I brought a whole stream of entrepreneurs and investors through just because I was trying to figure out what to make of this. Like I, I felt like there was something magical in there, but it was buried under layers of terrible because this industrial technology requires basically a, a tech to come in once a week or you know a, a crazy person like myself to go in and tweak it. It takes hours to go dial in the software and get it working. So I, I brought folks through and I would create things and I'd say like, what do you make of this? They look at this huge thing in my garage and said, uh, the, 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 the industrial version, and say, uh, you're crazy, Dan. What are you talking about? And then I'd make something and they'd say, oh, oh, yeah, okay. There's somebody I know in my family who's a crafter who would love this. The things you're making, I actually, I want those things, and I want a way to make those things. And as we looked, we found this market. The 85 million people I talked about are people in the United States who do a craft project regularly. Think about a uh, typical age of 25 to 55, 
85 to 90 percent women, shopping at stores like Joanne, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, engaged in things like paper cutting and scrapbooking, in things like sewing and, uh, and um, uh, leather craft and woodworking, people who are making the world around them, making things that are precious to them and to themselves. And one of the things that we realized from the very beginning is that this process of making things is extroverted. You don't make something and then keep it to yourself. You create things to share, whether it's uh, giving them as gifts, whether it's posting them on social media, whether it's starting a business to sell them. People create these beautiful things. These things are proud of, okay, they think they're beautiful. You know, we look at what people create and some of them are amazing and some of them are very personal, I'll just say. And they share them with the world around them. In fact, you know what, if you want to ignore me for a minute or two, go open up Instagram on your phone. Search for hashtag Glowforge. You can see in live, real time, what our customers are creating in this very moment. I can't promise you what you're gonna see. <laughs> I don't know. But it's this world of creation. You'll find almost 400,000 creations that people have posted already, and that number is growing exponentially because the power of creation is tied to sharing. And that's what's been able to drive our product forward is we sold over $300 million worth of our, uh, of our flagship product at the higher price point, and now at this newly affordable price point where we can bring it to the masses the creative uh, dreamers who want to build things themselves, as we've launched with, uh, just in the last couple of months, launched with Joanne, with Michaels, and the Home Shopping Network, where we sold out in seven minutes. A thing I never thought I'd say about a company I ran a decade ago, but it has been an incredible partnership for us as we find these creators fall in love with the ability to make things and bring them to life. So you've asked for a demo and a search in the wild. That is true confidence in your in the crafting community of, of Glowforge. <laughs> yeah, it will, we'll see what turns up, but our customers never let me down. Like the passion and enthusiasm, over 100 Facebook groups dedicated to creating with Glowforge technology, tens of thousands of customers on our own forum, and then that sort of social validation that you see, that kind of enthusiasm and passion around creating, that's something that's all about unlocking a, a superpower that people have never had before. For. The, the power to dream of something, push a button, there's just one button on it, when it lights up you push it, and bring it to life. And, and so what's been happening in the crafting industry for the last 10 years? You know, I, I think of crafting and I think of you know, my grandmother doing her knitting or you know, grandfather building a, a, a birdhouse. Like, do people still have time to do crafts and do people still have a budget to shell out $1,200 for an aura or five to $7,000 for a flagship? Like, who's doing this and, and how prevalent is it? You know, it's something that we've seen across the country as um, in this world of things being made half a globe away in a factory, put on a container ship, shipped across the ocean, deposited in an Amazon warehouse, hoping that somebody's gonna wanna buy it, having it delivered to your door. People crave uniqueness. They crave authenticity. They crave personalization. And the things that people can make that are uniquely theirs are uniquely valuable. I'll tell you, I, uh, my wife and I went over to a friend's house. We brought a good bottle of wine because we knew they'd enjoy it. And at the last minute, I grabbed four slate coasters. They cost a dollar each from Michael's. I threw them in the Glowforge and I engraved the, the, their last name in a big, you know, fancy initial, which takes all of two minutes to set up. Hit the print button and we took those four dollars worth of slate coasters. The very nice bottle of wine got a quick look. Those coasters were beloved. They were so excited. They wound up, the next time we visited, they were in a place of honor, stood up on the mantelpiece. And I, yeah, I mean, I take it for granted now because it's so simple and easy to say, yeah, this is something special and unique. And you know, that's what our house is decorated with. Uh, our spice jars are all arranged just so to fit. The, uh, if you open our silverware drawer, every single you know, fork and spoon con compartment is exactly the right size and place. Because we live in a world where it's really easy to build the world around the world that we imagine, to create that world that we design. And so of those 85 million crafters, those are people who have that same dream. About 8 million of them, about 10%, have upgraded to some form of digital fabrication device already. The largest vendor of those is Cricut who makes a digital device that works mostly in paper and stickers. They have eight million customers who use digital files to go create objects from these, these uh, $400 uh, cutting machines that use a razor blade, a little tiny knife. 
And we're able to go and take those same designs, to take those same customers, and enable them to work across beautiful cherry hardwood, across brilliant multicolor acrylics, thick leather, across fabrics, and to do it with a beam of light that makes it quick and precise and simple and easy to take the idea in their head and bring it to life. And that can be as simple as going to our catalog of thousands of ready-to-make designs, clicking one, typing in some text or dragging and dropping a photo in and hitting print, or as complicated as going and designing something like this leather bag from scratch, assembling it, and then selling it. And we have tens of thousands of Glowforge-powered businesses where people are creating everything from personalized cutting boards to high-end leather goods using their Glowforge to go bring their dreams into the world. So personalization, uh, you've got gifting and, and these kinds of things. To what extent are your users or seeing your users start to expand this activity into side hustles and actually making money by printing things and selling things either as part of their you know, uh, existing business or you know, as, as giveaways or even going on Etsy and selling them on Etsy. I mean, Etsy is like $3 billion worth of goods sold every quarter. Indeed, and we know of uh, tens of thousands of self-identified customers who've done that. I'll tell you about one of them. Um, my daughter came home from school, 15-year-old uh, twin. The uh, twins are now 15 since, since the uh, board game. And she said, Daddy, can I take money from a teacher? And I said, honey, you're going you're gonna to have to give me a little more than that. <laughs> and she said, well, so I made these earrings. And she showed me the earrings that she just printed that morning. They were, she used our magic canvas AI art generated tool. She typed in guinea pig playing double bass because she loves our guinea pigs and she plays double bass. So she had these earrings of a guinea pig playing double bass that she printed that morning and wore into orchestra. And everybody in the orchestra wanted their pet playing their instrument. Snakes on trombones and puppies on percussion and like you name it. And being her father's daughter, she took orders from all the students and was wondering if she could charge the teacher. I told her, give her a freebie, you know, that'll, that'll pay off in time. But that sort of like, that, that motion where people will buy the $1,200 version, they'll go create a beautiful pair of earrings, it'll take, it'll take 15 minutes to print this pair of earrings, which is great for a craft project, then they'll find that people love what they've created, they're excited about what they've created, they will upgrade to our flagship model, which can print 15 pairs of earrings in 15 minutes, a minute per pair, and then start a business. We had one of our, uh, one of our uh, members of the inside sales team started out, she got her Glowforge and had a family full of realtors. So in the first month or two, she, she put out a call and sold $20,000 worth of custom engraved cutting boards and then did not sleep because she had a new job and now $20,000 worth of cutting boards to fulfill. Wrap that up, said, I'm not doing that anymore, but boy, that was a heck of an example, and now I'm going to be able to tell folks who, who want to learn about this what it's like to start a Glowforge-powered business. So whether it's a unique creation, whether it's something personalized, whether it's creating hundreds of you know, pens or coasters for, um, for businesses in your neighborhood, that ability to go create an industry drives the passion and excitement of some of our, our, our best customers and, uh, and the customers of our premium product. Where can I get the guinea pig earrings? I think it's everyone's that, question. Only for my daughter. <laughs> she's, she's now working on putting together a business online with some friends for her business communications class to go scale that to the world. So uh, Devin earlier spoke about AI and the new revolution of AI that's, that's happening right now. Uh, how are you guys thinking about generative AI in the context of creating real world objects? So there's two different pieces where we see AI intersecting our company. The first is, as Demon was talking about, we see AI as a critical piece of our internal infrastructure. And across sales, customer support, finance, the teams are using uh, ChatGPT4 derived models to go streamline what they're doing, have fewer people being able to get more accomplished and focus on the most rewarding parts of the work while offloading some of the simple stuff like how do I put together that complex Excel formula? Um, I'm going to go write this uh, you know, sales letter to a, a school district because we have thousands of schools who are customers of our project that's going to be customized for them. I'm going to have ChatGPT do the draft. We're using that internally. 
And then on the other side, we're building this for our customers. So my daughter was able to create that earring by simply describing it and then having our magic canvas tool deliver that. We have a new generation of that coming in just a couple of weeks that we actually co-designed with Google, who's using it as a proof of concept to demonstrate their AI infrastructure, where they helped us uh, build the next generation of that that's even more powerful and capable, and ultimately giving our customers the ability to describe complex objects like my like my shoulder bag, have the AI design those for people who may not be able to use CAD software to create those from scratch, but that people can do that for themselves. So l last question we have time for, uh, without going into too many specifics, uh, where do you see Glowforge going in the next five years? What's, what's over the horizon for the company and you? It's hard to say because our customers are so wild, diverse, and different right now. I mean, I'll give you just a couple of examples and then I'll, then I'll tell you what's out there. Um, I, I was uh, on Twitter uh, last year and I saw this amazing video go by my feed. Somebody built, uh, they found in their window well two baby robins trapped and their mother was freaking out, cheeping. They ran to their Glowforge and they designed from scratch. They started their webcams. So they had the whole thing recorded. They, they designed from scratch a robin ladder and they put this in the window well and then caught video as the little baby chicks hopped from step to step and mom went along with them to escape the window well. And I said to my marketing team, this is amazing. We have to sponsor, we have to like highlight this Twitter user. And they said, oh, there's a problem. And we looked at their account. They actually run a Glowforge powered business, but we can't really share it. They make custom engraved paddles, not ping pong paddles. And I said, oh, okay, maybe, maybe we don't highlight that Twitter feed. That's one customer. We have another customer who just spoke to our, uh, to our uh, company who uh, is the uh, chief prop master for the Barbie movie. If you saw the Barbie movie, the weird Barbie house, all made on a Glowforge. And then, you know, a really common, something we see all the time, uh, uh, somebody who went and created every gift for uh, his 12-year-old uh, teen, I think 12-year-old uh, twins, for his uh, extended family, for business friends, uh, and did these all on his Glowforge, which I only found out because Neil Patrick Harris went on Jimmy Kimmel and told Jimmy all about how he used his Glowforge. That was the first time I, I knew he was, he was doing that. And when I look at that arc, I see all the different pieces. I see the ability to take these super creators, like the prop master from Barbie, and give them the power that they need to realize their vision. I see, on the other end, the ability to make this affordable so everybody can go bring this to themselves. And as you see us expand into the world, it is that world of 85 million people domestically, 129 million internationally, who love to create things, who have a vision of the world that's their own, that's different, that's better, and giving them the superpower of creation at the push of a button. We have an aura here that people can check out at their leisure back at the, at the bar. Uh, it's sold out in seven minutes on the first offering at, uh, at HSN. So get them while they're high. They, they're at Michael's, they're at Joanne's stores, they're, at, uh, they're on Amazon now. Uh, so thank you, Dan, for the, the passion and uh, we, we love it. We, we think this is a great business and we're excited to be a part of it. Thanks so much, Matt.